Well, good morning, everybody. It's the middle of the week. Hope it's going well for you, and I am delighted you've joined me for today's devotion. We are in Psalm 94, so be sure and open your Bible. And while you're doing that, I just want to remind you, be praying for opportunities this week to invite someone to come to worship and life group with you this coming Sunday morning at First Baptist Church. All right, Psalm 94 deals with a subject that I think all of us think about, feel from time to time, and and it's the subject of, of wicked people who hurt, take advantage of, injure the vulnerable, the weak, the powerless, and so on. And what does it seem that they get away with it? And they even have the attitude that God's not watching, God's not paying attention, even if there is a God. And, and, and he begins very forcefully by saying, God of vengeance, rise up and judge them. And so I think all of us at times have asked the question, why does it seem that bad people get away with bad things for so long? And he even addresses in this psalm their attitude that says God doesn't see, but then says, you know what? You think the God who created the eyes doesn't see and the God who created the ear doesn't hear? God sees and hears everything you do. And then he spends the bulk of this psalm saying, God, in spite of all that, I trust you. And the truth is, Lord, without you, I would not have gotten through all the things I've gone through. And so he he, he celebrates God and gives thanks for God being his refuge and his help as he's gone through the ups and downs of life. And then at the end says, hey, there's going to be judgment on the wicked. It may not always come when we would like or expect, but it's going to come. And so that's kind of a an outline, if you will, of Psalm 94. It's, it's doesn't so much answer questions as it just says, hey, we feel this stuff, but in the end we trust God and realize that God gets us through stuff and God shows up for us and that ultimately the wicked will be judged. Now, devotionally, the verse that spoke to me is verse 12. So let's look at that for just a moment. He says, blessed is the man whom you chasten. So the author of this psalm is saying, God, blessed is the man, the woman, the person that you, that you, God, chasten, and then the one that you teach out of your law. So blessed is the man, Lord, whom you chasten, or um, um, uh, the NIV translates that discipline. Blessed is the person, God, that you discipline. The New King James instructs. So those three translations, God, blessed is the man that you chasten, that that you discipline, that you instruct, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law. What's he saying here? There's a connection between the teaching in the second phrase of verse 12 and the chastening or discipline or instruction in the first phrase of verse 12. And, and, and it's this, that, that God teaches us through his truth and through his word. But it's not just about head knowledge. One of the mistakes that I am convinced we have made for a long, long time in churches is thinking that the primary purpose of Scripture is to fill our mind with information. That if we're learning stuff, hey, we're growing. Not necessarily. Uh, we, we've made this more of an intellectual thing than a life thing. And what he's saying here is that God teaches us from his law, his word, and what that does is it changes us because it will chasten us, it will instruct us, it will discipline us. In other words, the same word of God that will encourage you, inform you and teach you, that will direct you, the the same word of God that will strengthen you, also corrects you, convicts you you and points you in the right direction, letting you know what is wrong, but pointing you in the direction that is right, convicting you when you are wrong and saying that go this way. God's word does all of that. The, 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 one of the roles of, of scripture is to chasten, to discipline, to punish, to correct so that we might move forward in the right way. 
And if, if our heart is right, we want that. And what he says in verse 12 is, blessed is the man that this happens to. In other words, it is a blessing for the word of God to convict you, a blessing for the word of God to correct you, a blessing for the word of God to discipline you. God's never doing that just to, to spank you, so to speak, although spanking may be involved. He's doing it also with, with the goal through instruction of pointing you in the right direction. And so God, God's word is, is not always positive, happy, build you up, you feel good, because sometimes growth means I have to deal with the negative stuff in my life. Growth means that sometimes I have to deal with the sin in my life. Growth means that sometimes I have to deal with the wrong attitudes in my life or the wrong behavior, the wrong decisions, the wrong priorities, the wrong values. And so God is going to instruct me, not just in information, but in living, in living, and in, in understanding who you are, who you need to be, and who you can be. And I think it's interesting that that verse is in the midst of this chapter about the wicked hurting others. And, and I think the point is, one of the points anyway, is that if we don't have the right attitude and we're not open to God chastening and disciplining us and growing us and correcting us, then, then we're going to look at the unfairness of this life and we're going to throw up our hands and say, where's God? And we're going to quit. But you see, because I'm always wanting to grow, I realize, you know what? I'm a sinner and I need to grow. And it's when I have that attitude that I learn to trust God in the midst of so much that I don't understand. I learn to trust God in the midst of so much pain in this world because I realize God doesn't owe me a bed of roses all the time. But if you have the attitude, God owes you a bed of roses all the time, then when bad stuff happens, guess what? You're going to get mad at God and quit. But because you want to grow and stay close to God, you realize um, hey, God's got plenty to do with me, let alone this whole big old bad, bad, bad world. So uh, what I want to encourage you with and challenge you with is to be blessed by letting God correct you and then direct you. If you're not open to the correction, don't expect the direction. That's the word for today. I'll see you tomorrow as we look at Psalm 95. God bless you.